Now, no matter how well-intentioned our reuse and recycling programs are, we are still creating hundreds of millions of tonnes of new plastic every year. So we're clearly quite a long way from solving our plastic problem. There's definitely no simple solution, but what some companies are doing with a spot of science can be pretty mind-blowing. We are a generation demanding change. Whether we like it or not, we're going to have a lot of plastic for the foreseeable, whilst it definitely has its negative side effects. It's also important to recognise that it's a pretty amazing material that has enabled so much. A major issue is that all of the plastic that's ever been created still exists in some form somewhere. One of the companies that's revolutionising plastic has been creating products that will biodegrade in certain conditions, like in heat, air, moisture or sunlight. The aim is to return the material back into nature, well, as much as they possibly can anyway. Polymateria's plastic alternative has been around for a few years now. It's used for food packaging and some cups. But now the company's moving into a slightly different type of material. In fact, replacing what's used in some products that you might not even know was plastic in the first place. Think face masks, women's hygiene products or wipes. What we're doing for wipes, diapers, uh, tea bags, they all have their unique use case if you want and also time frame within which we would want biodegradation to happen. How does the transformation process actually work? There's three core things. The time control piece, that's the self-destructing part. So that's, that's something that at point of manufacture we can dial that up or dial that down. That's literally within a couple of weeks is taking it from its plastic-like state into its wax-like state, but that's not where it stops. The third thing that we're doing is we make that wax draw in microbes and fungi and bacteria, and that is the way we're able to get those materials fully back to nature in less than a year. Well, they seem just the same as the plastic version. They feel the same, they look the same, but once they start to transform, that's when things are very different. And this is what it looks like. It's very, very soft and apparently is completely harmless. Looks like powder, but sort of disappears. I wanted to show you how a biotransformed uh, wax looked like and felt like uh, versus a microplastic. And that's what you've touched a bit before. Yes. And we've put that in, in this vial um, to show you how it behaves when you heat it slightly. Now it's completely melting and you can see that the other bit of plastic is completely the yeah, same. As I would expect to stay see, just the same. It just looks the same. And now if I take this one and I tilt it, it flows like a candle. What you will have in nature is that uh, you will have a bottle biotransforming and becoming a wax and that wax will then be fully biodegraded like a banana peel or apple core by nature. We've looked at other companies before who are trying to solve the plastic problem. What is it about your products that means they can actually do the job? We've published more papers in this space than anyone else, so we put our data out there to be rigorously reviewed by other experts in this field. What we're really trying to do is create something that's capable of moving the needle on a 100 million tonne per annum problem. They are continuing to develop the technology. And whilst there's no silver bullet, there are alternatives being worked on. Founded by 22-year-old Jacob Nathan, Epoch Biodesign is looking to change the way plastic is broken down. We design enzymes that break down plastic waste and the resulting chemicals that we make from that, we can manufacture into all sorts of new products like paints, coatings, fertilizers, cleaning products, and ultimately new plastic. The beauty of biology is that it enables us to carry out chemical reactions at very, very low temperatures. And so we can use enzymes that enable these sorts of chemical reactions to happen at very low temperatures and pressures to break down those plastics into those building blocks to make those new plastics again. There are two sides to this equation. One is we make way too much of the stuff, um, but the other is we don't actually know what to do with most of it once we're done using it, right? Um, even if we stopped making plastics tomorrow, we still have 10 billion tons that are just sort of sitting around taking up space, and, and we might want to do something with that. Wow, that's pretty impressive to see bits of that cup just turn to wax like that. I know, when it was still in cup form, I kept tapping it to check it was really solid. <laughs> and it was, it was a normal cup. Really impressive. <laughs>